what is up guys and welcome back to the channel we here with something new something different well not different but we finna see and find out why doesn't the u.s use the metric system y'all hit that subscribe button send down those recommendations i mean i can take a slight guess on why we don't use it because people don't like change so they don't want to change or they don't want to adapt so we're gonna jump into this and find out why Today's episode is sponsored by Dashlane. You've probably heard of identity protection, password managers, and VPNs, but do you have them? Are you using them? Well, if you're not, you definitely should be. And the best way to do that is with Dashlane, which is a one-stop shop for all of your digital identity protection needs. If all of your passwords are the same, it's a bad idea. You can use Dashlane's password manager to create and securely store complex and unique passwords, making it less likely that your accounts are going to be compromised. They also have a VPN as part of their service, meaning that you can browse the internet securely and confidently, even on dodgy public Wi-Fi. But not just that, they also actively monitor the dark web to see if your information information has been leaked somewhere. That means you can go in and change your passwords before someone breaks into your other accounts oh, that share that same password. Plus, Dashlane does what it's always done. It stores your passwords. It keeps your personal data secure. It fills all of those annoying boxes for payment info or passwords for you. A lot of Dashlane is free, but there are some premium features you can buy if you want more from the service. To see if those are right for you, you can take a 30-day free trial and after that get a 10% discount by using our code. Today I found out at dashlane.com forward slash today I found out. Today I found out. And let's get into today's video because we are answering a viewer question. Thinkbonner14 asks us, why doesn't the United States stop using idiot units <laughs> and go metric? Okay then. In 1793, noted French scientist Joseph Dombey departed La Havre, France, bound for Philadelphia. His mission was to meet with Thomas Jefferson and give him two of the rarest items on Earth. Unfortunately for Dombey, fate had other intentions, and storms pushed the ship he was aboard well off course. And so it was that around the time he was supposed to deliver his precious cargo to Jefferson, he found himself instead at the mercy of British pirates. Dang. Being French in this situation, not exactly ideal, so at first he attempted to pass himself off as Spanish, but his accent gave him away. Dombey was eventually taken to the small Caribbean islands of Montserrat, where he ultimately died before he could be ransomed. Dang. So, well, what was the precious cargo that he had decided to deliver as a gift to the United States? Well, well, this was two small copper items, of which only six sets existed on Earth at the time. They were standards that represented a meter and a grave, the latter being better known today as a kilogram. At the time, the United States, having already become one of the first nations in the world to adopt a decimal base 10 system for currency, was strongly considering doing the same for their system of weights and measures. The idea was to get rid of the mix of British weights and measures that were mixed with other systems that were commonly used throughout the young nation. Thus, with the initial strong support of then Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson, and thanks to a desire to continue to strengthen ties between France and the United States, adoption of the new French metric system seemed rather close at hand. Along with a trade agreement concerning grain export to France, Dombe was to deliver the meter and grave standards and attempt to argue the system's merits to Congress, who at the time were quite open to adopting these units. So basically, he was getting ready to drop off the metric system. And was basically, you know, was boat drive by. Dang, that sucks. Argue the system's merits to Congress, who at the time were quite open to adopting these units of measure. Of course, we all know how this turned out. Don Bade never got a chance to make his arguments, thanks to concerns about whether the metric system would stick around at all in France, combined with the fact that trade between Britain and the US would be hindered by such a change, the US eventually decided to abandon efforts to adopt the metric system, and mostly just stuck with the British system, though the US customary units and what would become the imperial system would soon diverge in the following decades. But as more and more nations came to adopt this new system of weights and measures, the U.S. slowly began to follow suit. Fast forwarding to 1866, and with the Metric Act, the U.S. officially sanctioned the use of the metric system in all contracts, dealings, or court proceedings, and provided each state with standard metric weights and measures. In 1876, the United States was one of just 17 nations to sign the Treaty of the Meter, establishing, mm. among other things, the International Bureau of Weights and Measure to govern this system. 
Fast forward to a little under a century later, and the full switch seemed inevitable in the United States after the 1968 Metric Study Act. This ended up being a three-year study looking at the feasibility of switching the United States to the metric system. The result? Well, that was a report titled A Metric America, a decision whose time has come. This recommended that the change should take place and said that it could be done in as little as 10 years. Oh. Unfortunately, the public was largely either apathetic or strongly opposed to making the switch. According to a Gallup poll at the time, 45% were against it. This was nothing new, however. A huge percentage of the time that a given people of a nation have been asked by their government to switch to the international system of units, the general public of those nations were largely against it. Even France itself, who went back and forth for decades on the issue. I that's how I feel like most people, especially in the States, like... People don't adapt to the time. They had a problem with it back then, and it's probably still a problem today. If we were to say, let's make this change, I don't think people, people would probably just be like, well, we've been doing this for so long. Let's just keep doing it. I think people would still be opposed to it. That's just like some of the amendments. I mean, most of that stuff was according to that time. And some of these amendments need to be changed to be a part of the time that we are living in today. And they're not. People are still using certain amendments for the past times. And it just don't relate to this time today at all. Against it, even France itself, who went back and forth for decades on the issue. Indeed, it was this going back and forth that contributed to the United States' hesitation to adopt the system in the early going. Brazil actually experienced a genuine uprising when the government forced the change in the late 19th century. Over half a century later, British citizens still stubbornly cling to many of the old measurements in their day-to-day -day lives, though they've otherwise adopted SI units. So why did all of these governments frequently go against the will of their people? Well, arguments for the economic benefit simply won out. As in so many matters of government, what businesses want, businesses often get. So the governments ignored the will of the general public, and they did it anyway. But in the US, the situation was different. Not having the pressure from being bordered and economically as bound to one's neighbors as in Europe and being one of the world's foremost economic powerhouses itself, the immediate economic benefit, it didn't seem so clear. For example, California alone, one of 50 states, if it was its own nation, would have the fifth largest economy in the world. Texas and New York State aren't far behind when compared to nations of the world's economies at 10th and 13th place respectively, let alone the other 47 states. Seeing lesser readily apparent economic benefit and not having the same geographic pressures as in Europe, in the 1970s many big businesses and unions were in strong opposition to the change, citing the cost of making the switch, and on the latter side unions worried that such a change would make it easier to move jobs that formerly used customary mm. units overseas, given that now such product could be more easily purchased from abroad. Swayed, when the 1975 Metric Conversion Act was signed by President Gerald Ford, it had largely lost its teeth. While it did establish a board whose job it was to facilitate the nation's conversion and put forth various recommendations, the act did not have an official timeline, and the switch was voluntary. Nevertheless, contrary to popular belief, in the decades since, the United States actually has largely switched the metric system, just the general public, both domestic and international, seem largely ignorant of this. The US military almost exclusively uses the metric system. Oh, yeah. Since the early 1990s, the federal government has largely been converted, and the majority of big businesses have made the switch in one form or another, wherever possible. In That's one thing I can say. The 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 uh, military does use it, now that I think about it, just by how they go off reading the clock and different things like that. They, I, they're probably the only... I mean, like I said, science class, we kind of, it was certain things that we did. It was between certain lessons. We didn't like just focus on that and stuff like that. But you can see, like I think somebody mentioned in a video before, like they'll have both of the systems like on a on a can of soda, you know, on a juice carton or something, you know. So it just appears. I think it's we we do kind of. I feel like we have both for those who who learned it, didn't learn it, type thing.
The majority of big businesses have made the switch in one form or another, wherever possible. In fact, with the passage of the Metric Conversion Act of 1988, the metric system became the preferred system of weights and measures for United States trade and commerce. In the medical field and pharmaceuticals, the metric system is also used almost exclusively. In fact, since the Mendenhall Order of 1893, even the units of measure used by the layperson in the US, the yard, foot, inch, and pound, have all been officially defined by the meter and the kilogram. Speaking of the general public side, nobody in the US blinks an eye about food labels containing both metric and customary units required thanks to the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act, with the majority of states since also allowing metric only. The gram is commonly used to measure everything from the amount of flour to add into a recipe to how much marijuana one buys from a shop or, where it's still illegal, their local dealer. And if you were to ask someone to pick you up a two liter of Dr. Pepper or how a person did running a 10K, most everyone in the US would know exactly what what you're talking about. Beyond yeah. this, you'd be hard pressed to find a ruler in the United States that doesn't include both inches and centimeters and their common divisors. Further, in school, both customary units and the metric system are taught. Yes, while many Americans generally have little practical need to learn a second language, most are, at least for a time, reasonably fluent in two very different systems of measurement. And that's because we not we don't really get into learning a different language until probably middle school, seventh, eighth grade. And that's if you choose to. So you have a choice, but like once you get to high school, you have to take two years of a foreign language. The thing is, by the time you're in high school, you're just trying to pass class or get through school. I feel like it'd be more interesting as an elementary kid, you know, kindergarten through fifth grade. I think it'd be more interesting for kids to learn a different language to the point that they actually want to learn a different language. Because once they, by the time they get older, they don't want to learn that. And As I know with that, languages, I know it's not about language. We're about the metric system, but still, they mentioned it. Practiced, however, once out of school, many lose their sense of the latter from <laughs> lack of use and try. concrete perspective. It's one thing to know what a hundred and zero degrees Celsius refers to with respect to water, but it's a whole different thing to get what temperature you might want to put on a jacket for. However, students who go on to more advanced science classes quickly pick up this perspective as they become more familiar, and thus the scientists of America aren't at the slightest disadvantage here. All students that go along that path become just as familiar as their European brethren, if just a little later in life. So this all brings us around to why the United States hasn't made the switch to the metric system more official than it already is. Well, primarily there are three reasons. Cost, human psychology, and, at least on the general public side, little readily apparent practical reason to do so. As to cost, while there has never been a definitive study showing how much it would cost the United States to make the switch official and universal, general estimates range even upwards of a trillion dollars, all Dang. things considered. Why so high? Well, to begin with, we'll discuss a relatively small example in road signs. Installing street signs is an incredibly expensive affair in many places for a variety of reasons. For instance, in 2011, the Washington State Department of Transportation claimed it costs anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per sign, oh though they later clarified that those were the worst case and most expensive scenarios, and sometimes the signs and installation can only ring That's in at around $10,000. Bronley Mishler of The Dot explains, Installing a sign along a highway isn't quite as simple as pounding some posts into a ground and bolting a sign to it. That's why the costs are so variable. There are two ways to replace a sign. One way allows us to uninstall it under old rules. The second way requires us to follow new federal standards. The old rules apply if we are just fixing something, not building something mm. new. Installing a new sign along the road counts as fixing something, basically just giving drivers more information. If we install a sign on the side of the road, it would cost $2,000 to make the sign, buy the beams and rivets, $8,000 for two steel poles and concrete, $5,000 to clear brush and other landscape work before and after installation, $15,000 for maintenance crews to set up traffic cones, work vehicles, program wow. signs, and spend the evening doing the work. Total, $30,000. The new rules apply if we are doing a new construction project. Costs would be higher because we would have to bring everything up to the current Dang, highway. Dang, and I was thinking about having a street named after me. It's going to cost $30,000 just to do that? That's a lot. A code. These often involve putting up a sign bridge, a steel structure that spans the entire freeway to hold up multiple signs. Typical costs include $2,600 to make the sign, buy the beams and rivets because the sign must be bigger, $75,000 for the sign bridge, for a total of $77,600. 
WS yeah, Dot Deputy wow. Regional Administrator Bill Vleck also stated, beyond many of these signs yeah. needing to be special ordered on a one-off variety, think a highway sign with a city name on it and a distance marker, and them often being much larger than most sign makers make, drastically increases the cost. Further, there are sometimes special features that increase the cost of the sign, and we don't really know about them. For instance, Vleck states that if there's an auto accident, if a car hits that signpost and there's any kind of injury involved, the state is going to be liable. Mm. So we're looking potentially at a multi-million dollar settlement in those kinds of situations. Mm. So it would have to be a breakaway type signpost, and it has to be specially fabricated so that if a car hits that sign, it reacts appropriately and doesn't come down and basically take out the occupants. For your reference here, in 1995 it was estimated that approximately 6 million signs would need to be changed on federal and state roads. On top of that, it was noted that approximately just shy of 3 million of the nation's about 4.2 million miles, that's 6.8 million kilometers of public roads, are actually local, with an uncertain number of signs in those regions that would need to be wow. changed. That said, the rather obscene costs quoted by the aforementioned Washington State DOT would likely be grossly overestimated on a project such as this, with prices massively reduced if special laws were passed to remove much of the red tape, and given the extreme bulk orders that would be called for here, including for the signs themselves and contracts to dedicated crews to make this happen as fast as possible. I didn't know it'd take all that when it comes to road signs and streets, street names and stuff. Cause this seemed like, especially in my neighborhood and uh, just in my city alone, there's new neighborhoods being built like every, it seemed like every other month or so. And sometimes, you know me, I'd I be focusing just basically, oh, like, they're putting up a lot of houses. But I'm not thinking about how much it's even costing now that I know to even put up and create a street name, get that registered and stuff. I guess so it can be registered and Google Maps can find it. So you can get the address to your house. That's wild. That's a lot of money. For example, in 1995, Alabama estimated that they could swap out all of the signs on federal highways for a mere $70 per sign, which is $120 in today's money, on average. Perhaps a better rubric would be looking at Canada's switch, swapping out around a quarter of a million signs on their 300,000 miles, that's 482,000 kilometers, of road. The total reported cost, only a little over $13 million, which is about $61 million today, or around $244 oh per gosh. sign in today's dollars. Extrapolating that out to the minimum 6 million signs, that would then cost approximately $1.5 billion, plus whatever additional signs needed to be swapped out on the three quarters of all the rest of the roads that are not accounted for in that 6 million Damn. sign estimate. Hey. Not an insignificant sum, but also relatively trivial for the US taxpayer to cover at about $5 per person, plus some uncertain amounts for the local or road signs that need to be changed. Moving on to far greater expenses, industry and wider infrastructure. While it's impossible to accurately estimate the cost of such a change to American businesses as a whole, we do get a small glimpse of the issue when looking at a NASA report studying the feasibility of swapping the shuttle program to full metric. They determined the price tag would be a whopping $370 million oh for that project alone at the time, so decided it wasn't worth the cost for little practical benefit. Now extrapolate that out to approximately 28 million businesses in the United States, their software their records, their labels, their machinery, employee training, etc. Needing switching would be like some sort of Y2K event, but on steroids. <laughs> Therefore, while it's not really possible to tell for sure, many estimate that it could swell into the region of hundreds of billions of dollars and maybe even into the trillion territory. Mm. At this point, even the most ardent supporter of the metric system in the United States may be rethinking whether it'd be worth it to make the switch more official than it already is. But do not fret. I mean, if it's costing this much for street signs, I mean, I don't understand why it would cost that much to switch this. Like, it, to me, it's like you just make the switch, you know. But I feel like it'll stop a lot of manufacturing when it comes to what they putting on the labels when it comes to these measurements. So they probably looking at that. At, that's a lot of money to just make that switch when you can really do. I mean, you can just add both though, you know metric supporters Dang. the world over. To begin with, the raw cost of That's making the switch doesn't actually tell the whole story here. In fact, it tells a false story. While the gross total of making the change would be astronomical, it turns out the net cost likely wouldn't be much or anything at all. 
For example, average Australian businesses saw a 9-14% boost directly attributed to the switch when they made it. Back in the United States, when companies like IBM, GM, Ford, and others spent the money to make the change, they universally found that they made a profit doing this. This was mm. largely from being able to reduce warehouse space equipment needs, streamline production, lower necessary inventories, as well as taking the opportunity to, at the same time, remove inefficiencies that had crept into their respective businesses with regard to these systems. They were also able to more uniform formally manage their businesses abroad and domestic to the same standards and systems. As a very small example, GM reported they were able to reduce its number of fan belts that they had to manufacture and stock from about 900 sizes to 100, thanks to everything that went with the switch. In some cases, the businesses also noted new international markets opening up, both in sales and ability to mm, more so easily and often right. more cheaply acquire product abroad. All of this resulted in a net profit extremely quickly from investing the money into making the switch. As you might expect from these types of benefits, an estimated 30% of businesses in the United States have largely already switched to metric. Granted, these are generally large companies and various small businesses dealing locally might not see such a benefit. However, with the increasing globalization of supply chains, many small businesses would likely still see some benefit. Unfortunately, particularly when it comes to construction, that general industry has lagged well behind others in switching. And as you might imagine, the existing infrastructure of the nation, from roads to bridges to homes to drill bits to screws to the architectural plans for all of it being based on customary units, would not be cheap to change, and it isn't clear what the cost would be. At all, because it, like nowadays, that stuff, it got expensive. That stuff is getting super, I mean, everything is getting expensive now, so I can just imagine the cost when it comes to building houses now, to building new roads and stuff like that. It's a lot of money. However, as in all of this, the cost could potentially be mitigated via a slow phase-out approach with grandfathering allowed, similar to what other nations did, though in most cases on a vastly smaller scale than would be seen in the United States. All this said, we here at Today Found Out would like to posit that what the international community actually finds irksome about the United States not using the metric system is not United States businesses who deal abroad, or United States scientists, or even the government, all of which largely use the metric system, and all of which have little bearing on what Pierre, sitting in his mother's basement in France, is doing at a given moment. No, what upsets Pierre is that the US general populace does not use the metric system in their day-to-day -day lives. Why is this irksome? Well, beyond just the human drive for uniformity among one's community, in this case of the global variety, because English websites the world over keen to get some of those sweet, sweet US advertising dollars cater to the US audience and use the units that said audience is more familiar with. Those who are not familiar are often left to Google a conversion to the <laughs> units that they are familiar with. The alternative is Definitely for said me. websites to include both, but that often makes for a break in the flow of the content, something we here at Today Found Out regularly wrestle with to find a proper balance. So this brings us around to the human side of the argument. To begin with, while the United States would unequivocally see many benefits to joining the rest of the world in some good old-fashioned metric lovin', as you might expect given the lack of immediately obvious benefits to the layperson, few among the American public see much point. After all, what does it really matter if a road sign is in kilometers or miles, or if one's house is measured in square feet or square meters? While some cite the benefits of ease of conversion to other units in a given system in day-to-day -day life, this is almost never a thing that's cumbersome in the slightest. If it was, Americans would be clamoring to make the change. The argument that ease of conversion between the units should be a primary driver for the public to want the change simply doesn't hold water in an era where, on the extremely rare occasion people actually need to make such a precise conversion in day-to-day -day life, they have little more than to say, hey Google. <laughs> and in most cases, even that isn't necessary when you're reasonably hey familiar. when you want to know something only a google away or youtube you learn a lot on youtube it's not that's how i learn more about the metric system just hear it on youtube hey google and in most cases even that isn't necessary when you're reasonably familiar with a given system Perhaps a poignant example of how, when you're familiar, a non-base-10 system of measure really isn't that complicated to deal with in day-to-day -day matters, consider that the world still uses 1,000 milliseconds in a second, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day. What few people realize about this is that the original metric system actually attempted to simplify this as well, dividing the day into 10 hours with 100 minutes in each hour. Unfortunately, most people didn't see the benefit in switching when also factoring in having to swap out their existing clocks. Nobody has much seen <laughs> a need to fix the issue since not even the most ardent champion of the metric system for its ease of conversions compared with imperial or customary units. 
And while he might still be lamenting the stubbornness of Americans for not seeing the genuine benefits to themselves that would likely be realized here, we should point out that virtually every nation in the world that uses the metric system has holdover units still relatively commonly used among lay people that aren't metric. For simple reasons of not seeing a reason to stop, from calories to horsepower to knots to light years and many more. Or how about if you've ever flown a plane almost anywhere in the world? Well, congratulations, you've in all likelihood unwittingly been supporting the use of something other than the metric system. You see, the pilots aboard from French to American use a feet-based flight level system mm -hmm. for their altitude and knots to measure their speed. Just two standards that, much like the American public and their road signs, nobody has seen much practical reason to change. Now to more concrete human psychology for not making the switch, which has gradually been converting more and more Americans from general apathy to the anti-switch crowd as the decades pass, when one group of humans tells another what to do, occasionally using terms like idiot units and starting flame wars <laughs> in comments of every website or video posted on the web that uses or discusses said units, you will universally get resistance, if not outright well, hostility in response. Really this is not an American thing, as so often purported, this is a human thing. Trying to force the French government to mandate by law that French is dead and English is now to be universally spoken for the sake of better international trade, economics and relations is not going to go down well. You might argue that in a not insignificant percentage of the world, English is already the standard in such international business dealings, but that is really little different than the current situation in business in the US concerning the metric system. What we're talking about is how the general populace of France would react if the government mandated such a change, and even more so if outside nations were pressuring it. Again, it's not an American thing, it's a human <laughs> thing. Beyond that, as everyone who's ever done anything online is well aware of, humans hate change. They loathe it, in fact. Make a change to, say, the format or style of a video, no matter how small, and rest assured that no matter if the change is unequivocally vastly superior and the audience universally comes to agree with that, a not insignificant number of one's audience will complain, sometimes vehemently. More directly, we see this again and again throughout the history of various nations making the change to SI. Again, resistance to change is not an American thing, it's a human thing. But fret not, world. You see, slowly but surely, the United States has been converting to metric, and for most practical purposes, for those outside of the United States, other than having to see it on websites, which again, we posit is the real driver of people's ire the world over, the switch has already been made. So much so that at this stage, while the cars made in America may say miles per hour on the speedometer, the makers of those cars are using metric to measure and build things. The very military that defends. I mean, America most cars still like operate in kilometers, I believe, because I think miles. I can switch it from miles to kilometers. I think it's kilometers, but yeah, I can still. You can still kind of switch it. So most cars. I mean, then again, most cars are not from America, so we get them shipped over here anyway. The makers of those cars yeah, are using building. metric to measure and build things. The very military that defends America's right to use freedom units has long since largely converted to the unfree variety. In the end, money talks. And for much <laughs> the same reason other big holdouts like the UK ultimately gave in, as American businesses who have an interest in dealing internationally continue to make the switch, they are seeing to it that the metric system more and more creeps into the daily lives of Americans. This will only continue until the inevitable complete adoption. Slowly but surely, America is inching towards metric, largely without anyone domestic or abroad noticing. If you want to make the switch last longer, well, continue calling them idiot units. <laughs> a mildly humorous statement from a certain point of view, given that it takes more brain power to use customary units than metric, making the latter far more tailored to idiots. <laughs> also, continue to start flame wars in comments comprising mostly of personal attacks rather than using the many and very legitimate and rational arguments that exist as to why it would be of benefit to the people of the United States to make the switch. In the end, we all know there is no better way to convince someone to do something than making the whole thing a religious war, with you on one one side and them on the other. Facts. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do. Yeah, hit like he said, I gotta subscribe because it's like my second or third video. I don't know why I won't. There we go. But I mean, he's right. It's just a human thing. People are gonna do what they want to do. So, but I feel like it's just up to you what you know. I mean, here in the states, you just primarily do the imperial system. That's you. I feel like we have both and just um, what you understand, you know, so I mean, I slightly understand both. I slightly understand a little bit more of the metric, but I do mostly understand the imperial just because that's what we're taught mostly. So, but guys, that's all I have for this video. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, send down those recommendations and y'all be blessed, be the best and be you.
I'm out.